Today's sew along is a maxi dress with a little bit of a cottage core flair. I used McCall's 7801. There are a few views available for this pattern that allow you to choose from different length styles as well as different necklines. I've chosen view C today. When I went into sewing this pattern, I did underestimate the amount of fabric I needed to achieve the ruffled look all the way around the bottom of the skirt and the sleeves. Instead of cutting my ruffles from the main fabric, I ended up finding some contrasting lace in my stash and I applied this to the bottom of the skirt and the sleeves instead. The advantages here was that I was able to save on the amount of fabric that I needed and also the lace was pre-ruffled so I didn't have to do any gathering along the bottom edges. I just matched the length of my ruffled lace exactly to the length of the bottom of the skirt and the bottom of the sleeves. And I also reduced the amount of seam allowance that I needed to apply the lace along the bottoms here. Otherwise, the construction of the dress for view C is the same whether you choose to apply lace or self fabric. You can find this pattern at your local fabric store. I've also left a link for you below so that you can check out all the details and sew it along with me. So cut out your fabric, mark your dots and notches, and let's get started. I've traced my darts onto the wrong side of my front bodice piece and now I'm ready to pin them in place. Fold them in half and pin through one dart leg and out the other. Do this for both darts and for both of your front bodice pieces. Now take your front bodices to your sewing machine and sew from the edge of each dart to the point, leaving thread tails at the end so that you can tie them in knots. Once you've finished sewing darts into your main front bodice pieces, repeat for your main lining pieces. Also construct the two darts in your back lining piece and your back main piece. Place your front bodice pieces right sides together with your back bodice piece and pin your shoulder seams. Sew your shoulder seams with a 5 8 inch seam allowance and press your seams open and repeat to attach your front and back lining pieces. The instructions call for one yard of half inch ribbon, but I'm just going to use a very thin strip of twill tape and these are for our ties. Take your yard of ribbon and cut it in half. Grab your bodice lining piece and working from the right side, the main side of your fabric, we're going to attach our tie to the left side of the back bodice piece. Match the raw edges up and place the bottom of your tie 5 eighths of an inch away from the bottom edge of your fabric and pin in place. Take that to your machine and baste in place. Now grab your left front bodice piece and we're going to attach our remaining tie to the bottom inner edge. Place the lower raw edge of the tie again 5 eighths of an inch away from the bottom edge of the fabric, pin in place and then baste. Place your main and lining bodices right sides together and we're going to pin or clip all along the inner edges. Match your shoulder seams and your notches. Sew as pinned all around these inner edges with a 5 8 inch seam allowance. And then trim these seam allowances. And then we're going to understitch the same portion that we just sewed. So we're going to turn our lining over this seam allowance. We're going to sew the lining to the seam allowance about an eighth of an inch away from the original stitching line, all the way around. Now we're going to sew the side seams of the bodice and the main pieces separately. So moving your main fabric out of the way, place your lining side seams right sides together and clip in place. And do this on both sides. And then sew your lining side seams together with a 5 8 inch seam allowance and press your seams open. And then place the bodice pieces of your main fabric right sides together along the side seams and clip those in place. And then sew your main fabric side seams with a 5 8 inch seam allowance and press your seams open. So now our bodice is nicely lined. For the armholes, we're going to base the material of the main and lining fabric together so that we're ready to insert the sleeve. Pin your main and lining fabric together all around the armhole and do this on both sides. And then go to your machine and baste both of your armholes in place. Now I'm going to apply the lace to the bottom of my sleeves. I'm going to place the top edge of my lace right along the bottom edge of my sleeve and pin in place. <laughs> 
The lace that I'm using has a nice finishing at the top, so I'm going to sew just as far as that finishing, which is about a quarter of an inch. I'm going to sew the lace to the bottom of my sleeve along the finished top edge of my lace, a quarter inch seam allowance all the way across, and do this for both sleeves. I'm going to trim away the seam allowance of my sleeve only. If you're using a lace or a fabric that does not have a finished edge, you could just serge those two seams together. But because my lace fabric is already finished, I'm just going to trim away the raw edge of my sleeve fabric so that when I turn this lace to the inside, the raw edge of that sleeve fabric will be concealed underneath the clean edge of my lace. And now you can turn that seam to the inside and pin in place all along the bottom of the sleeve. Then I'm going to top stitch along the bottom of the sleeve with about an eighth of an inch seam allowance and do this for both sleeves. Fold your sleeves right sides together matching the short edges and pin or clip in place. Do this for both sleeves and sew your seams with a 5 8 inch seam allowance. I've gone ahead and serged that seam for a clean finish and I'm also going to press that seam toward the back and top stitch in place so that the seam doesn't flop around and it's more comfortable to wear. You should have transferred from your pattern piece a double notch indicating the back of the sleeve. So I'm going to press my seam in the direction of the double notches and top stitch in place. To prepare to insert our sleeve into the armhole, we're going to do some gathering stitches first. The pattern instructions tell us to sew basting stitches from dot to dot at the top of our sleeve cap. But I've already installed my sleeve on the other side and when I did, I noticed that I needed a little bit more ease. For this sleeve, I'm going to sew my gathering stitches from notch all around the top of the sleeve to the other notch. And your notches are marked below those dots closer to your underarm seam. Use a five millimeter stitch length. Sew the basting stitches with about a half inch seam allowance. Now I'm going to place my sleeve right sides together with my armhole and start by pinning together the underarm seams. Then I'm going to match the dot at the top of my sleeve with my shoulder seam and pin in place. I'm also going to pin in place on either side of the underarm seam from the seam to the notches because those portions of the sleeve will not be gathered. We can start pulling our gathering stitches so that the sleeve fits the armhole. One thing to keep in mind with these gathering stitches is that their only purpose is to ease the sleeve into the armhole and not to create gathers on the sleeve. The only gathering that happens should happen within the seam allowance and not beyond, so those gathers should not be visible on the outside of the garment. Once you've distributed those gathers, go ahead and pin in place and do the same for the other side of the armhole. Now I'm going to take my sleeve to the sewing machine and sew the sleeve to the armhole with a 5 8 inch seam allowance. I'm going to sew with the sleeve facing me so that I can keep my eye on the gathers and make sure that all of the gathers stay within the seam allowance and that I'm not catching any puckers as I sew. and then serge both of your armholes to finish. Place your back skirt pieces right sides together and pin the center seam. This center seam should have three notches for you to match up. Sew your center back seam with a 5 8 inch seam allowance and then serge your seams separately and press them open. Now place one of your front skirt pieces right sides together with your back skirt piece along the side seam matching your notches and pin in place. Sew your side seam from top to bottom with a 5 8 inch seam allowance, serge your seam separately and press the seams open. And repeat these steps to attach your remaining front skirt to the back skirt on the opposite side. Now I'm going to start attaching my lace to the outer edges of my skirt just as I did for the bottom of my sleeve. I'm going to place the top edge of my lace right sides together with the edge of my skirt starting at the topmost corner of one of my front panels. You have a dot from your pattern piece at the top of your front panels, and I'm going to taper my lace here. I'm going to place the outer edge of the lace in line with that dot and pin in place. I'm going to do the same thing for the dot on the other front panel when we get there, but for the rest of the outer part of the skirt, 
I'm just going to line up that top edge of my lace with the raw edge of the skirt all the way around. Now that I've attached my lace all the way around and I've come to the top of my other front panel, I'm going to taper the lace in the same way, aligning the outer edge of my lace with the dot that I've marked at the top of my front panel. Now I'm going to sew my lace all around the outer edges of my skirt, from the top of my front piece all the way around to the top of my opposite front piece, just clearing the finishing at the top of my lace so I'm just using a quarter inch seam allowance. Now I'm going to trim the seam allowance of my skirt only all the way across. I'm going to trim it by about half. You also have the option here of simply serging both sides of this seam together all the way around. But again, because the seam line of my lace is already finished, when I flip it to the inside, this will be a cleaner finish than if I were to serge it. Flip that seam to the inside and pin all along the bottom of the skirt all the way around just as I did for the sleeve. Once I've secured it all the way around, I'm going to take it to my machine and top stitch an eighth of an inch away from the edge of the skirt all the way around. I'm ready to gather the top of my skirt. I'm going to sew basting stitches from one edge of the skirt at the dot all the way to the dot on the opposite side. Now grab your bodice piece and we're going to attach the skirt to the bodice, to the bodice lining only. We're going to leave the lining free. I'm going to start by aligning and pinning the center back of my bodice to the center back of my skirt. Placing them right sides together and pinning in place. And then I'm going to match the top corner of my skirt with the bottom corner of my bodice and pin in place. Now we can start pulling the gathering stitches so that the skirt matches the bodice from clip to clip. Find your side seams and pin in place. And then continue clipping this section in place. Once you have that section pinned, repeat the same steps to attach the remainder of your skirt to the remainder of your bodice main piece. And now you can go to your machine and stitch the skirt to the bodice with a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Careful to keep your lining out of the way as you stitch. I've gone to my ironing board and I've pressed the entire lower edge of my bodice lining to the inside by 5 8 of an inch. And before we close that waistline seam with our lining, trim that seam that we just sewed by about half. Now that the seam is trimmed, I'm going to place my lining over that seam so that it just covers my stitching and pin in place. Now that I have my lining pinned in place, I'm going to take it to my sewing machine and I'm going to stitch in the ditch working from the right side of the fabric from one end all the way around to the other end, periodically checking underneath to make sure that I am catching my lining fabric as I go. When you wear your garment, the left side of your bodice will wrap around your body first and the tie on the outside of your left bodice will match with the tie inside your garment. On the bottom corner of your right bodice, at the waistline, we're going to sew in snap buttons. Take one piece of that snap set and place it at the bottom corner of that bodice piece at the waistline and using a needle and thread, we're going to sew that in place. I don't want my stitching to be visible from the outside of the garment, so I'm going to make sure that my needle does not exit the outside of the garment. I'm just going to allow my needle to go through the lining and the seam allowance, and you'll be able to feel that seam allowance underneath the lining there. Once that side of the snap is secured, we can attach the other side of the snap on the front of our left bodice at the dot indicated from our pattern piece. And this again will be right at that seam line. And I'm going to sew this again through one layer, through the main layer of my fabric, and through that seam allowance that I can feel on the inside. And once those snaps are secured, you're all done with your dress. Thank you for watching this sew along.
Make sure you check out my other videos for more great sewing inspiration, and I'll see you in the next video.